like someone's trying to get something out of you. And as soon as they get it, they don't want anything to do with you. Um, but I think like with this detached um, attachment style, disorganized attachment style, I really do think that those people are genuinely unhappy and they really deep down inside want to be connected with somebody, but they're just afraid of it because growing up, think about it this way. If you grew up with a parent who was unpredictable, who was inconsistent, the environment that you grew up in, your early childhood was neglectful. You didn't have nurturing. You are confused because caregivers are supposed to be a source of comfort and security for you. But instead, they were figures of fear and unpredictability. So it's a paradox, right? We're children who grew up in this atmosphere. They need comfort from the same person who's distressing. And it, it's a profound internal conflict in that child. Parents of children themselves who develop this or disorganized attachment, they unintentionally are projecting this trauma and stress onto their child. So there's this erratic caregiving patterns. So what's happening is that they struggle with consistent emotional regulation themselves, and they're not able to give it and to contribute to a stable environment. So the environment is unstable. So what happens, if you're following me, the child learns to adapt to unpredictable interactions and thereby <laughs> they develop a disorganized attachment style. It's really interesting. Um, and then when they grow up, they have a really hard time bonding with another person. So it's a very sad thing. I think people who grew up with the disorganized attachment, this come to me, come to me, but you know, get away, get away is too scary. They feel very lonely. They feel very afraid. So I just want to be cognizant because these people are in pain and it's many of us, right, who have to deal with some of these things. And it's unfortunate. But uh, but that's something that we have to recognize. Y'all recognize it today. Rec see it in yourselves. You know, the how how scary it is to totally be in a relationship with somebody, to give your trust over to somebody, and then you're afraid of it because you grew up with this idea of the person you want comfort from, you could never get it from. You want comfort and security innately. All children want this from their caregivers. And their caregiver wasn't able to deliver that. So I think we need to have a little bit of compassion before we start calling people names. So see it in yourselves and help yourselves. Okay, moving along. This means that we see others not as they are, but as we imagine them. Wish, expect, or believe them to be. So we're not seeing the real person. We're seeing the fantasy of the person in our head, right? We fall in love, not with the person, but with the image in our mind. When the real person emerges in our own version of that person fades away, we imagine that the love is gone. <laughs> but it was never love to begin with because it began in our own mind. <laughs> we have this idea <laughs> that we've projected onto somebody else and that wasn't even them. We weren't really seeing them. It wasn't reality. The object of the love was not a person, but a mirage. <laughs> 